Welcome Secretary Salazar, Secretary Napolitano, Secretary Albright, Director Mayorkas, new citizens, honored guests, and families. You can be seated. My name is John Jarvis. I am the Director of the National Park Service, and I'm very, very pleased to host you here today. I'm sorry the weather uh, was not better, and we could have been out on the grounds of the Washington Monument on the National Mall, but we're in this beautiful auditorium named after one of our greatest advocates for public lands, Sid Yates. So on behalf of the entire Department of Interior, it's my pleasure to welcome you here today at this historic venue, at this historic moment when you will become American citizens. The National Park Service is a very, very proud partner of the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services to host these kinds of ceremonies in national parks around the country. Just this week, hundreds of people are becoming new American citizens in 14 different national parks. People from all over the world recited the Pledge of Allegiance and took their oath of citizenship, as you will today, in places like Yosemite National Park in California and Independence National Historical Park in Pennsylvania. The national parks are places that we as people have agreed to set aside to preserve to tell the story of America. From breathtaking landscapes to the hallowed ground of the Civil War battlefields, to the homes of U.S. presidents, to the places where the fights for civil rights were started and ended. These places are real, the stories are real, and they are really yours. America's national parks belong to every American citizen. We invite you to visit, to learn, to volunteer, to have fun, and to join us in the stewardship of these places that were entrusted to the National Park Service over 100 years ago. To help you get started in that journey, each of you have received a kit, looks like that, um, which includes a map and an invitation to over 395 places. The only place that's not in there yet, because we have to reprint the brochure, is the memorial to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., located just a few uh, blocks from here, the newest unit of the National Park System that celebrates the history of this great civil rights leader. Visiting your national parks will help you get to know your new country. They will help you learn about the events that shaped our history and the people who came before you, many, many of whom were immigrants themselves. Places like Lowell National Historic Park in Massachusetts tell the story of Irish immigrants, the laborers who worked in the factories in the early 1800s, but today is the home to one of the largest Cambodian communities in this country. Or Cabrillo National Monument in San Diego, which commemorates the Spanish exploration along the West Coast. Or as we commemorate the 150th anniversary of the American Civil War, I encourage you to visit places like Gettysburg or Antietam and learn about the Civil War that tore apart this country, taking over 600,000 American lives, but resulted in the freedom of over 4 million enslaved Africans. Whichever you choose, we can't wait to see you. Come see us in our national park. So it's now my honor to introduce my boss, the man selected by President Obama to lead um, the greatest cabinet, the greatest institution that protects our public lands and our national parks and our waterways, Secretary of the Interior, Ken Salazar. Thank you, uh, Director Jarvis, and uh, welcome to all of you who are to be sworn in as new citizens and to all your families who are here today. I want to uh, sing out my praises to uh, Secretary Albright, who uh, reigns from my home state of Colorado, whose home state still is Colorado, and whose story you will hear in a few minutes. But she is uh, an icon of uh, American history, a uh, role model to myself and to all of us who are on stage and to all of the people of this country. To my great friend, uh, Secretary Janet Napolitano, who has been Attorney General of her state of Arizona, United States Attorney for Arizona, as well as Governor of her great state of Arizona, and now is a great friend and is the outstanding uh, Secretary of Homeland Security for President Obama. 
and also to Director Mayorkas, who works uh, so hard to make sure that uh, all of you and people who are in your similar circumstance have an opportunity to exercise uh, the right of citizenship uh, which you have earned. And I welcome you here to this Department of Interior. Uh, it is a place where we tell America's story, and so much of America's story is a story of uh, the immigration to America and how people have become citizens of this country. So many of our nation's citizens first passed through the halls of Ellis Island in New York. That historical gateway to the United States is now preserved as a national park. I have gone there often to remind myself and to remind the American people that uh, so many people here in the United States of America trace their roots through uh, the gateways of uh, Ellis Island and, uh, and Liberty Island. And today, as we celebrate Constitution Day and Citizenship Day, we also remember another significant event for America that occurred 139 years ago when President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation. Doesn't seem, maybe because I'm getting older, to be that long ago, but uh, 139 years ago, that was a time when President Abraham Lincoln said it was not okay for this country to any longer have people own other people on the basis of their race. So that Emancipation Proclamation, which uh, we celebrate uh, today as having been signed 139 years ago, is one of the cornerstones of who we are as uh, America. So as we stand here today, we feel the power of the promise of freedom enjoyed by all American citizens. We welcome all of you. And with that, I would ask you all to rise for the presentation of the colors by the United States Park Police Honor Guard and the singing of our national anthem. Let us give uh, Shaila Multan uh, a round of applause. She's a supervisor, immigration service officer for a great song. And with that, uh, it's my honor to introduce uh, Alejandro Mayorcas, who has made this event possible. Alejandro. Thank you very much, Secretary Salazar, for hosting us today. Together, our departments reinforce our proud heritage as a nation of immigrants and also celebrate the beauty of our country, a country whose future you, our newest citizens, will help define. We are deeply honored to have Secretary Madeleine Albright with us today. There is no greater example 
of the power and gift of United States citizenship than Secretary Albright. 91 years after her Italian grandfather, Filippo Napolitano, became a citizen of this country, Janet Napolitano was sworn in as our nation's third Secretary of Homeland Security. Under her leadership, our department has raised awareness of the rights and responsibilities of citizenship, and we have fostered immigrant civic integration in new and innovative ways. In a moment, we will hear from Secretary Napolitano. Now I will call the list of countries that are represented by our naturalization candidates today. Candidates, when you hear your country of nationality called, please stand and remain standing for the administration of the Oath of Allegiance. Afghanistan, Bahamas, Bangladesh, Belarus, Bolivia, Colombia, El Salvador, Ethiopia, France, Ghana, Guatemala, Iran, Lithuania, Mexico, Nepal, Nigeria, Pakistan, Paraguay, Peru, Philippines, Poland, Republic of Palau, Sierra Leone, Somalia, South Korea, Sudan, Ukraine, United Kingdom. If you did not hear your country called, please stand at this time. Secretary Napolitano, I now present to you 46 candidates that have applied to become citizens of the United States. Each of the candidates has been interviewed by an officer of U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, and unless exempted by the law, has demonstrated the ability to read, write, and speak words in the English language. Each has demonstrated his or her knowledge and understanding of the history and the principles and form of government of the United States. Secretary Napolitano, I recommend that these candidates be administered the Oath of Allegiance, thereby admitting them to United States citizenship. Thank you, uh, Ali. Please remain standing. Uh, and thank you also, Secretary Salazar, Director Jarvis, Secretary Albright, uh, for being with us today to welcome our newest citizens to the United States. So ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to administer the oath of allegiance to the candidates for naturalization assembled here today. It's a long oath. Get ready. Candidates for citizenship, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I hereby declare on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince, potentate, State or, state or sovereignty, of whom or which, whom or which I have heretofore been, have been a, subject a subject or citizen, that I will support and defend, will support and defend the, Constitution and laws the Constitution and laws of the United States of America, of America. against all enemies foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will bear arms on behalf of the United States when required by law, that I will perform non-combatant service in the armed forces of the United States when required, by law. when required by law, that I will perform work of national importance, work of national importance. Under, civilian under civilian direction when required, when required by law, that I take this obligation freely, I take this obligation freely. 
without any mental reservation, or purpose of evasion. So help me God. Congratulations. I am delighted to be the first person to address you as my fellow Americans. And uh, that sounds great, doesn't it? Come on. Yes. With a single solemn oath, you are now fully American with all the rights and freedoms that our Constitution guarantees. This naturalization ceremony is indeed occurring at a special time because this week across the United States, we are honoring the signing of the, of the, of the U.S. Constitution on September 17, 1787. The groundwork laid by the framers of our Constitution 224 years ago ensures that being an American is not about one's religion, ethnicity, or place of birth. Rather, the status of American citizenship is itself the common factor that unites all of us around civic ideals based on equal rights and shared responsibilities. I encourage each of you to consider the great privilege these new rights bestow and the importance of your new responsibilities. I urge you to follow the example set by the founders of our nation and continue debating issues that impact your country, your community, and your neighborhood. Use your voice to make a difference. Vote, volunteer, participate, get engaged in issues that are important to you and to your families. This naturalization ceremony marks the end of your journey toward citizenship, just as it marks the start of your new life as an active, engaged American citizen. I'm proud to be Secretary of the Department responsible for immigration and citizenship. This work is important not only to our nation and our nation's security, but also is of deep personal importance to each of you and the millions of immigrants who have come before you. Since 2006, U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services have welcomed nearly four million new citizens to our country. Last year alone, more than 676,000 people were naturalized. On average, each year, more than one million individuals choose to settle permanently in the United States. We have a strong tradition as a welcoming nation, and United States Citizenship and Immigration Services continues to find ways to improve the administration of the legal immigration system and support those like you on the path to citizenship. Over the next year, we will expand public education and outreach on the rights, responsibilities, and importance of U.S. citizenship to ensure that those who follow in your footsteps, including members of our armed forces, have the information and opportunities to be successful in the citizenship process. And our efforts to welcome immigrants ensure that the United States continues to draw people from across the world who choose to settle here and contribute in important and innovative ways. We are grateful to you because in doing so, you contribute to the continued success of our nation. Now, the United States has always benefited from the contributions of immigrants and naturalized citizens from entrepreneurs to scientists to cultural icons to members of the United States Armed Forces to public service, we are enriched by your achievements. Today, I have the privilege of introducing one such exemplary naturalized citizen who has dedicated her life to public service and advancing interests of the United States. She was born in the former Czechoslovakia as Mariana <laughs> Korbelova. But you know her as our 64th Secretary of State, 
Madeleine Albright. Like you, Secretary Albright was not born in this country. She arrived here with her family as a political asylee and as a naturalized citizen has demonstrated an infallible commitment to her chosen homeland. She is a pioneer who broke barriers by becoming, in 1997, the first female Secretary of State and at that time, the highest ranking woman in the United States government. Her accomplishments as a professor, as ambassador to the United Nations, author, cabinet member, and of course, as a U.S. citizen, speak not only of her drive and of her talents, but also of this country's promise as a land of opportunity. And beyond her vast experience in the public sector, Secretary Albright is also a successful businesswoman, serving as chair of Albright Stonebridge Group and Albright Capital Management, a global strategy and investment advisory firm. So I think you will agree with me that she is quite a role model for you to meet on your first day as United States citizens. In our ongoing efforts to honor the many contributions of naturalized citizens like Secretary Albright, USCIS presents the outstanding American by Choice recognition. Recipients of this honor have demonstrated their commitment to this country through civic participation, professional achievement, responsible citizenship, and the shared ideals that unite us all as Americans. I now ask Ali Mayorkas to join me at the podium as we present the outstanding American by Choice recognition to Madeleine Albright. So please join me in welcoming Secretary Albright, your keynote speaker, and an inspiration to Americans by choice and to all Americans. Secretary Salazar and Napolitano and Directors Jarvis and Mayorkas and friends and fellow citizens, good afternoon. Um, I am delighted to be here and so honored to be here with all of you. And I want to begin by expressing my appreciation to USCIS to, and to all those that are responsible for this amazing event. And I very much thank you for this award. It is very deeply appreciated and I will uh, treasure it. But I especially want to greet those of you who have just become citizens of the United States of America. And if you're anything like me, today is a milestone that you will look back upon with pride for the rest of your lives. I say that because as you've heard, I too am an immigrant. My family arrived here when I was 11 years old. Our native Czechoslovakia had been taken over by the communists who didn't believe in democracy or human rights. And so, like countless others before and since, we sought refuge here in the United States, taking passage on the USS America, a ship that steamed around the Statue of Liberty into New York Harbor. I remember being very excited, but a little bit scared, because I didn't know how I'd be received in this new land. I worried that the differences in the way I spoke and acted would leave me in America, but not really a part of it. And I had doubts whether having left my old home, I could really find another one. I should not have been concerned at all. At its best, this country's embrace is as wide as our continent is broad. My family was welcomed with open arms to Colorado and given a chance to make new friends, and to build a life of freedom. And for this opportunity, I will always be grateful. That very briefly is my story, but every immigrant and refugee has a story, and you, the citizens we welcome today, are of different races and ages and genders and faiths. 
You come from countries as large as China and as small as Palau, from as far away as South Korea and as nearby as Guatemala and Mexico. And as a group, you have traveled diverse paths from lands of your birth to this great capital city. And you are known by the names that vary in spelling and accents, names such as Aparicio and Taiba and Wang and Mohammed and Mikarva and Galang and Morales and Verkhovets. The miracle is that beginning today, each of those diverse names belongs to an American. For this ceremony marks the beginning and a chance for you to add to your own chapters to the saga of our land, which is, above all, a story of immigrants. From our nation's earliest days, the United States has been enriched by the steady flow of men and women and families to our shores. Attracted by America's promise, they have contributed immensely to the vitality of our neighborhoods, the health of our economy, the depth of our democracy, and the ongoing example of our unity. There are some who resent all this and who think that the day after they arrived is the day that the door to America should be swung shut. Let us pray that that time never comes. For our nation cannot stand still. We need the vitality and renewal that comes with fresh energy and ideas. And that's where you all come in. As new citizens, you accept a solemn responsibility, not only to live in our democracy, but also to participate in it, to help build stronger communities, to educate yourselves about issues of public concern. And as Secretary Napolitano said, to vote and to serve on juries and to defend our nation against its foes and to look out for your neighbors and to observe without fail the Constitution and the laws of our land. And all this matters because the America of tomorrow will only be as vibrant as we citizens make it. The United States has a proud past, but its future depends on us. Not far from this auditorium are the memorials to Lincoln and Jefferson and Washington Monument and Martin Luther King and the White House and our nation's capital. Visitors to this city are surrounded by reminders not only of great leaders, but also of a timeless idea that all men and women are created equal, and of its corollary that the power to govern must be derived from the people. This conception of democracy had its origins hundreds of years ago, but it remains the most powerful engine of human progress on the face of the globe. I've heard it said before, but I will say it again, only in this country could a daughter of a Czechoslovak refugee become Secretary of State. And only here could the son of an African exchange student rise to the highest office in the land. When you were being administered the oath, I kind of automatically stood up. And while it's not necessary, I enjoy renewing my vows. Uh, I feel it very important to always remember what it is to be an American. And you are about to receive a very important piece of paper. And I leave you with just one bit of advice. When you return home tonight, do what I did and put your citizenship documents in the safest and most secure place you can find because this piece of paper represents more than anything else in your life. And here is mine. People ask me what is the most important thing that ever happened to me, and it's hands down becoming an American. Because of this ceremony, America will be better tomorrow than it was yesterday. And for our country, that is cause of celebration. And for you, it is both a challenge and a priceless opportunity. So congratulations once more, and thank you once again for allowing me to take my oath again with you and to participate in this celebration. And now please rise and join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God,
Please be seated. Secretary Albright, thank you for those inspiring words. I think they inspired those of us who were born here and those of us who have chosen to become Americans, especially our new Americans today. Um, at this time, I would like to invite our new Americans to come up and receive their certificates. I will call you by name. Oh, and by the way, I'm Sarah Taylor. I'm the district director for the Washington District of the USCIS. It's been a pleasure to have you in our office and now to have you in this beautiful auditorium to celebrate your citizenship today. Um, I will call you by name and I would ask our um, dignitaries please to join me. If we can go ahead with the candidates. Henderson, Del Tong, Francisco. <laughs> Jesus Weiler, Mendez, Godoy. <laughs> Nina Mercedes, Tash. Enrico Umberto Aprico Guillen. Josefina Elizabeth Morales. Rakesh Shrestha. Alahe Behad. Nema Osman Omer Derar. Husayna Nandir Shagaya Osifade. Michael Quito Galang. Michael Albert Sugantan Sananthgan. Inessa Verishtev. Rosa Cristina Escobar. Brenda Liseth Yagui Seguil. Susan Catherine Silvera. Roxana Patricia Granados. Aziza Taibi. Degina Terefa. Nichesa Baler Manrayal. Jamali Apasagada Demalagio. Yemishrash Getachu Demisi. Zenaida Zamora Galang. Angelica Vargas de Cosio. Gretel Caballero Torino. Francis Mensa Adjie. Orlija Morphy. Senhaz Kamar. Kawaja Ifran Shafi. Carolina Jill Ochoa. Valeria Mikarava. Min Zhuang Kang. Nakara Lathis Minis. Sally Abdallah Hassan. Alexandra Maria Konafal. Irma Bustamante Figueroa. Helen Eleanor Walker. Fidel Rivera Blanca. Rosaria Victoria Blanca. Ladan Farah Mohammed. Tijan Mansare. Saida Nusrat Jehan. John Patrick Javel. Irma Ruby Figueroa de Javel. 
Grace Gifty Abawagwa. Jessica Yamaleth Diaz Marquez. And last, Efren Alcantra Pasno. Please let's have a give big hand of applause for our newest Americans. Director Jarvis. Well, let me be the next to say my fellow Americans, welcome. Um, and congratulate you um, on becoming citizens and welcome you uh, to this great country. Um, I want to thank everyone that joined us today, the folks in the audience. This is always powerful for all of us to participate in this. We, uh, we enjoy it, maybe not quite as much as you do, but we really love to do this. And so thank you, um, Director Mayorkas. Uh, the partnership is just extraordinary. Secretary Salazar, Secretary Napolitano, and especially Secretary Albright for sharing that your life experience and your great accomplishments. Let me encourage all of you to come visit national parks, the ones that, that uh, Secretary Albright mentioned right here in the nation's capital are all national parks. And, they are great places to come and experience and learn about this fantastic country that is now yours. Thank you all for joining us today here at the Department of Interior. That concludes today's ceremony.